These are reproductions of the Modern Radio Laboratory's number 18 Selective Diode Transistor Radio Kit, designed by Elmer G. Osterhout in the late 1950s or early 1960s. The last actual MRL kit was sold sometime prior to the spring of 1987 when Elmer passed away. It uses a 1N34A crystal diode as a detector and a general purpose PNP transistor as an amplifier. The set employs two tuned circuits, so you actually need two hands to tune in a station. Selectivity of the set is adjustable by changing the distance between the coils of the two tuned circuits. Plans to build this set can be found in MRL Detail Print 18. There's a link to it below in the description. I use this detail print as well as an actual kit to try to make a faithful reproduction. Here's a closer look at the top of detail print 18. Top left we have a schematic diagram of the radio. To the right of that is a drawing of the coils and under it are instructions on how to make the coils. Under the schematic is a picture of the layout of the chassis as you're looking down on the radio. And to the right of that is a pictorial diagram showing how the parts are connected. Thanks to Jeff Schmidt of Washington, D.C., you can now find the 1963 MRL catalog online. This is the entry for the MRL number 18 on the left. If we scroll down a little, you'll see that Elmer wrote, Around here, we picked up 24 stations. Now, where was around here? Where did Elmer live? From 1952 till 1966, Elmer and Modern Radio Laboratories were in Redwood City, California. There are still 10 local radio stations you could pick up there with a crystal radio, and they're all from San Francisco. San Francisco is where Elmer's wife Mabel was from, and San Francisco is where Modern Radio Laboratories ended up during the Great Depression. Getting back to the catalog, if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see that this set sold in 1963 for $7.95. But Elmer would build it for you for another $2. $2 in 1963 is worth $21 in 2025. Here's an actual number 18 kit from MRL. I got this from eBay. On the lid it says Extel set kit to build, but he never built it. Here's the front panel. It's countersunk on the back to allow for the variable capacitors. Now here's the base and the rails attached to the base. The rails are to allow the primary coil to slide back and forth. And here's the primary coil on its base. These coils were hand wound by Elmer Osterhout himself. And here's how it slides back and forth in the rails. Next we have the secondary coil. You know this set is one of those things that's not worth anything and it's priceless at the same time. Next is one of the variable capacitors wrapped up in newspaper with the number 18 written on it. It's very fortunate that this newspaper survived. The newspaper gives us the date of the kit, January of 1982. Here are some more parts. I don't think Elmer used these Ziploc bags. The previous owner probably put the parts in those bags. These envelopes, however, are original. This one has the transistor in it, and this other one has the dial scales for the front panel. Here's the volume control with the on-off switch, a knob, and this is the MRL made battery holder. Here's my version of the MRL battery holder. And I've got some extra parts here left over. Some of these parts didn't quite pass quality control. Here's some rails. And the rails are placed like this on the base. And we've got the base of the primary coil. The primary coil fits inside the rails and that allows it to slide back and forth. 
Here's an extra coil form. This did pass quality control, I just have some extras. I had to buy 8 feet of PVC to get that. And here's a primary coil. It's just as good as Elmer Osterhout's. Here's the copy of the battery holder. So you put everything all together and wire it up. And it looks like this. It took quite a while to make all the parts and to assemble it. These are all the parts that came with the kit. This is an original kit from Modern Radio Laboratories circa 1982. Now it's time to test the radio, but first we need a 9 volt battery. Elmer Osterhout and Modern Radio Laboratories sold Burgess brand batteries, so we're going to need a Burgess battery to make the radio work. This is what a vintage Burgess 9 volt battery looks like. I ain't even putting no modern looking battery in this here radio. So we're going to take this modern battery and we're going to paint it. And then after we paint it, we'll make some water slide decals and we'll put some water slide decals on the painted battery. And here's the result. Darn if that doesn't look like an actual Burgess battery. Now I'm full of myself. Well, I'm full of something. When you connect the battery on this little radio, it's important to make sure that the on-off switch is in the off position. If you were to accidentally put the battery in backwards, even for a second, it could damage the transistor. When it's in the radio, you can hardly see it. But that's quite all right. We know it's there. We're connecting the long wire antenna and the earth ground. The antenna is a piece of wire that goes out the window to a tree and it's about 60 feet long. This radio requires a set of high impedance headphones to make it work, but you're not going to be able to hear them in the video. So we'll use this amplified speaker. Amplifier on, radio on. Did I hook the battery up backwards? Oh, there goes the transistor, for crying out loud. Here we go. WFIL.com. Hi, I'm Charlie Kirk with TPUSA Faith. I want to remind you how powerful Christian radio can be. You see, for generations, AM radio has brought the hope of the gospel, biblical teaching, and encouragement right into our homes and cars, especially in times of crisis. But now, some automakers want to eliminate AM radio from new vehicles. Let's stand together and protect. WTEL AM Philadelphia. Follow us on social media at the Black Information Network. Listen online at BINnews.com. Or tell your smart device to play the Black Information Network. In the face of difficulty, hope in the face of uncertainty, the audacity of hope. Zero, one, two, three, uh, or the Rover Radio app, okay? Hey, and we have to end with a memorari as we always do. Rather than for the couple that's going to need it, let's just say a memorari in gratitude for our mothers and those wives who have made us fathers. Good evening. I'm Liz Warner. Five people now confirmed dead following a tour bus crash in western New York. Today, talking to Selena Lynn, Lynn from um, IBM Institute, talking about business challenges, dealing with all this AI that's going on. I want to thank you for listening to Tell Me More with Carol Holloway. We are live right now. First critic of the president in recent years. 
A tour bus returning to New York City from Niagara Falls with 52 people crashed and rolled Friday on an interstate highway, killing five and injuring multiple passengers. The bus apparently lost control on Interstate 99. Except the general manager, Scott Sauer. If a deal were to happen over the next 48 hours, um, we will do everything in our power to, to try to put as much service back on the street as we can. was 1540 a.m. transmitting from Philadelphia. According to Radiolocator.com, that's the last station on the dial in this area. There used to be a lot more stuff up here, including the Pennsylvania Turnpike, but it's all dead air today. Well, that was a brief demonstration. I got 11 stations, which is pretty darn good for a crystal set. Uh, if I had finagled with the dials a little bit, I could have picked up 12 stations. I could have gotten AM 1210. I have to admit I'm very impressed with the performance of this set considering how small those coils are. And as for the volume in the headphones, it can be extremely loud. I would never turn this thing all the way up. You may have noticed that in the demonstration I did not alter the selectivity of the set by adjusting the distance between the coils. So if you want to build one of these sets you could simplify things just by mounting the coils about an inch apart from each other. That way you don't need to make those rails or that slider thing for the coil. Thanks for watching, and thank you Elmer Osterhout. Your legacy still lives on.